Hey everyone, Sean here at Shock Surplus. Today we are going to talk about external bypass versus internal bypass. What we have in front of us here is Bill Stein's brand new 8100 external bypass with rebound and compression adjustment on the Jeep Wrangler JLs. And over here we have Old Man Emu's internal bypass with compression and rebound adjustment as well. Uh, very, very obvious differences here as far as um, just the overall look of the shock. You can tell Bill Stein's um, reservoir is much larger than Old Man Emu BP-51. Um, the bodies look very similar, but let's get into the actual details of these, uh, kind of who they're best for and their kind of overall capability. Um, so the first thing we usually look at uh, or anyone kind of sees when they're looking at a shock and it's very hard to uh, tell exactly what it's going to do. Um, we don't have good insight into a lot of the internals. Um, so we always kind of, the default is to look at shock body size, but uh, that's very misleading when you're talking about internal bypass shocks or external bypass shocks. Um, on, the, on the Bill Stein, this shock body is probably going to come in roughly around 2.6, um, maybe 2.5. Yeah, two point, yeah, we'll say, we'll, we'll call it 2.6. The Old Man Emu body is going to come in at 2.8. Now, if you're comparing a 2.8 inch body to a 2.6 inch body, you would kind of by, you know, automatically assume that the 2.8 inch body is gonna be uh, better because uh, it's thicker. But in the case here, these shocks are really aimed at kind of different, uh, different crowds, different uses. The BP-51, uh, the 51 stands for a 51 uh, millimeter uh, internal bore piston. The 8100s have Bill Stein's uh, 60 millimeter digressive piston. So uh, the actual damping surface on this shock itself here is greater than this one with a smaller body. Now, the reason why is because what you can see in this body uh, and what the actual design kind of leads you to see, there are internal ports. Um, so you, the, the, imagine internal tubes on this body underneath this surface here. Within the main chamber, there are little tiny bleed holes, top and bottom, that kind of, and then they're connected by these uh, kind of shafts on the outside of the body. And that's what it means by an internal bypass. When the, inter when the main uh, piston is forcing the oil in each direction through the normal kind of ride zone, and a normal ride zone meaning on the street, um, on easy gravel roads, just on the everyday kind of easy, no action kind of driving and service conditions. Uh, the internal bypass is really to keep that comfort going. It doesn't have to activate uh, the shim stacks within it to dampen the shock uh, to prevent map, you know, bottoming out or topping out. Um, so internal bypass is usually really aimed at keeping really good road comfort while still giving the shock ability to take the hard hits at high speeds. On the external, on an external bypass shock such as this, Bill Stein has a, you know, a double, this is like a double uh, bypass. They also have a triple bypass. And if you want to get crazy, there's a quadruple bypass. Uh, most off-road manufacturers will go up to a quadruple bypass, and that's for trophy trucks, race, race vehicles, way out of the expertise of um, our team. Um, but we are blessed with Bill Stein providing a, a dual pipe external bypass for an OE fitted Wrangler. Um, and like I said, they're coming out with them for the Tacoma, which are already out, uh, and the Forerunner, which are coming soon. The external bypass, basically, uh, very similar function to the internal bypass. Uh, forgive me, these shocks are big and awkward. Um, as the main piston is moving through through here, uh, these the, the ports are very obvious where they're located. Um, this is the compression port, and this is the rebound port. So. 
uh, through these adjust external adjustments, which are arguably more um, accessible than the, the adjustment here on the BP-51, and we'll go over that in a second. So same kind of, same kind of um, uh, function as the internal. So you're talking about a ride zone in here for everyday driving, easy gravel trails, um, and <clears throat> through, through adjustment of compression, or sorry, compression or rebound, you're able to basically allow how much of that oil, how much resistance uh, goes through these bypass ports. And that's gonna, that's gonna equate to direct feedback to ride quality, whether soft or firm. Along with uh, those compression and rebound adjustments on the Bilstein, there's also their 8100 technology that just comes standard with the shock, which means there's a, uh, a let's see, a rebound cutoff in this um, section of the shock, and then a jounce cutoff in the, in the top section of the shock, which means that more unseen technicalities of the shock, there are an additional basically two or three active pistons within this shock absorber to prevent, um, to prevent topping out and to prevent bottoming out. And what that kind of means is if you've ever been in a ride uh, with really good suspension and you come off of a hard hit, it's that very soft, plush landing feeling that you know you've got a great setup, you know that the shocks and suspension are working perfectly together. Um, a lot of the times, if your suspension isn't set up correctly, you'll, you, you might come off of an obstacle or hit hard and it'll be very harsh. Um, or you go maybe go off of a, a jump or go off of a, a, something similar to a jump and um, the suspension will droop out too fast um, and it, it'll feel very harsh. So all of these adjustments really allow you to be able to use the full travel of the shock in your given, in your given scenarios so that uh, you get that soft feeling as much as possible. The ultimate goal of being able to fine tune your shock is to be able to use the full shock travel um, as much as possible because then there's lower operating pressures, lower temperatures, it, it just feels better um, within the vehicle and you know your suspension's working well. Back to the BP-51, the adjustments on this for rebound and compression are done um, externally as well, uh, but it's done through these um, adjustable collars that you uh, basically rotate, as you can see. So uh, very soft for the compression and rebound, very, very, uh, very firm on both of these. So it comes with a wrench. Uh, you're able to adjust these while on the vehicle and you know, make it happen. One of the downfalls of this design is that we aren't, that we don't, don't have a good um, representation of right now, but these have a, a shock guard that comes up uh, here that sometimes prevents the access of these adjustments while on the vehicle. So keep that in mind when you're installing these. Um, I kind of learned the hard way when we had them on the Tacoma, um, but easily, uh, easily resolved by just removing the shock guard. Um, that's the, a basic overview of external bypass versus internal bypass. Um, there aren't too many bypass um, shocks available for the OE market. And by OE market, I mean these are going to bolt directly up to your JL, no modifications. These are going to bolt up to your JL, no modifications. Um, and that's the similar for some of the Tacomas, Toyotas, some of these other applications that these manufacturers are coming out with. Naturally, you can go to Bill Stein and custom order a uh, dual bypass or triple bypass or quadruple bypass for whatever application you want. You'll just have to be sort. You'll have to sort out the mounts yourself, and you can make it happen. No problem. It's a custom order. Um, but these, the beauty part of these is that out of the box, you could bolt them right up to your application. If you guys have any other questions regarding this, uh, we will do our best to answer. Um, so yeah, if you want to know some more about the BP-51s or the Bilstein 8100s, uh, we would definitely love to help. There are other bypass options that are coming out on the market, such as the Fox 3.0. Swayaway has an external bypass as well. So 
a lot of these manufacturers are really stepping up their game and giving uh, you guys, the customers, um, what they want. So let us know in the comments if you've got any questions. Feel free to email us or reach out to us on all the usual channels, and we'd love to help out. Thanks so much.